Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. As I get started, right? Everybody good? Yeah. So yeah. this is the Banish 22. This is probably one of the quietest things and funnest things to shoot that we sell. It'll do any rimfire, so 17s, 22s, Magnums, Hornets, 5.7, kind of a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, what's really cool about it is its serviceability. It's really easy to take apart clean. It's actually got a tool machined on the breech cap, which is the muzzle side of the gun, to remove the end cap in case your baffles were to ever get seized up so you can access them. All the baffles come out right here. They're all the same but one. I would call those deep buckets and that would be a short bucket. Short bucket is an end cap baffle, meaning it needs to go closest to the end cap. The remaining baffles can just stack in that same order. There's an index line on the side of most of our suppressors to make sure they're in their quietest configuration. So if you line those all up, just like so, you should have an aligned gas port inside your baffles. 22 is a lot of fun. I'd say roughly about 8 to 10 decibels louder than what we meet or a Daisy Red Rider BB gun. So it's quiet, super quiet. Whole thing's only 4 ounces, super light. Very hard to beat that guy. So I'll make sure I pass these around maybe as I go so you guys check them out. Yeah, not what heavy they are. Any issue with 4.6 through that? With what? Any issue with running 4.6 through it? 4.6 by 30? We haven't tested it yet. Yeah. Okay, I tried like three rounds. I was like, let me talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah, we, so. we haven't tested it yet. But it's a I'll good let you know if I break it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Test away, please. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so It's going to be broken soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got Don't warranty. give him permission. We got good warranty. Yeah. No problem. Um, we'll get into kind of our new can. This is the Speed K and the Speed K Ti, which is the newest one. Speed K is a flow through suppressor. It's one of our first 3D printed ones. It's actually printed out of either Inconel steel or titanium. Main difference between Inconel steel and titanium is going to be weight and longevity of life when it comes to like full auto fire. So the titanium one is half of the weight of the steel one. However, the steel one is going to last about twice as long during sustained fire. So you could, I like say, make this thing glow orange and not hurt it. Okay. And the titanium one, you get to a certain point where it's just limited full auto rating, no belt fed, that kind of thing. But if you're the hunter or the guy looking for a little house protection that maybe doesn't shoot like most of our law enforcement agencies or somebody with a machine gun, this is totally a cool option. So okay. it's hub mounted, which means you can use direct thread, QD, a whole bunch of different variants for what you'd want to mount it with. Um, and it can kind of ship that way to consumers too. So you can preset it with us kind of uh, whatever you want. So light one and then the heavy one, steel. Move on to the back country. This is our ultralight 30 cal. We got this out at, what was it? 21 shot show, I think roughly. Yep. 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 Um, it's five and a half inches, only seven ounces. It's magnum rated for rum, PRC 3378. It's kind of a hunting oriented can to cover those calibers. Um, the idea behind it wasn't really to be the quietest thing ever because we already do that. It was to be the lightest thing you can hunt with without earplugs. So it's right on the line of what OSHA says is hearing safe. It also uses a hub mount, just like the Speed K's do, so you can go QD or direct thread or what have you. Can you give me a little more info on what, what is the hub mount? Just basically the way hub it goes in, Essentially well, in the threading, or are we talking yep, this yep. or both? Or? So it's just the threading of the actual tube itself. Okay. Um, it's an industry standard 1.375 thread pitch that a lot, that again. Yeah, I'll give it to you, yeah. One, <laughs> 1375. A lot of manufacturers exactly. use that, yeah. like Silencer Co, Dead Air, and so on sure what's good about that is the industry then can share mounts so if you already have a whole arsenal full of 150 dollars muzzle brakes from a different brand but they use a hub mount you can get kind of whatever you want for a silencer which is awesome mm -hmm. and moving forward on a lot of the cans we're going to see probably almost everybody moving this. yeah so hub mount super nice. yeah it is it's very cool it's I, I really like that yeah is and because of that you can swap things into there from from other companies exactly. so, right yeah is there another number associated with the 1.375 which usually thread is Keeps like going. dash yeah point um, two something but something. it's not like x like you know, like how it's like uh, i have a note i could send you no, on it no, no it's just yeah. no okay yeah, yeah. That's exactly i'll yeah. send you a note i have on yep. it yep. Okay. you can yeah. call it hub mount um silencer co is the first one to come out with it it's actually really a problem yeah. is what it is yeah, yeah. exactly yeah so yeah yeah Lightweight, 
There you are. So we'll stick with 30 cal since I kind of started there. Next guy is our breadwinner, the one we've sold for years. It's called the Banish 30. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first in the market as a 30 cal to be user serviceable. So you take the baffles out for cleaning, which is huge. It's also modular. So it comes to you as a nine inch suppressor, but you can shorten it down to seven. If you're the hunter and you kind of want to have the lightweight in the blind truck type setup, short's mm -hmm. good. What's really cool is that baffles come out. A lot of 30 cows again are sealed or welded yeah. just like the buck 30 or the backcountry there. Yeah. So easy to actually clean this. It's easy to oh. actually clean. And then okay. the other perk that I like is it's really easy to warranty because of mm -hmm. this because I can just get you covered with a baffle. Yeah. It's also something that when it comes over time, there's really no shelf life. It's titanium. So as long mm -hmm. as you clean it with the right stuff, it shouldn't ever have any issue. That's why they put it in your leg. So, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. How often do you recommend cleaning? really depends on caliber and grain and what the pressure is outside and so on and so forth. But my recommendation is two ounces of carbon is too much. Hmm. So for example, this is a 13 ounce silencer. When we get to 15, it's probably built up a lot. It would take me maybe two to 300 rounds of 300 blackout to do that. And That's it would take a, uh, me 5,000 rounds of 300 PRC. So weigh these so then, you're saying? So you recommend weighing them? I That's normally genius. am doing okay. yeah. Cool. Because yeah, really no that. good rule of thumb is to, you know, once you get to this point, you probably should clean it or whatever. When cool. I'm teaching, I always get that question, when do I clean my gun? And it's pretty much the same answer. When stops yeah. running. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. And remember when that was and, like, take 10% off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not necessarily. What's kind of cool is we offer a tool that allows you to push the baffles out every one of these, kind of regardless of the round count. We have a lot of customers that are prairie dog hunters, and if I were to give them a limitation in a day, they wouldn't be very happy with me. So, they so you have a tool? Thousands of rounds through these. Yep. So what does that look like? Which is laying out here somewhere I would have seen. So okay. I, just, I just wrote up the speed cane. It says 50 to 100 in the manual, but in the same manual it says it survives 16 to 80 rounds. I was like, okay, so there's a little leeway in that. <laughs> well, the speed cane, for example, is yeah. vented, so it will stay right. clean a lot longer because right. it's letting everything out the front. So. Okay. Oh, here's the Baffle tool. removal tool. So it comes with a bunch of these little brass inserts. That looks like a that 46 caliber one, mm -hmm. which means it would just go in that big dog over there. But you'll get a 20 cal, a 30 cal, whatever. These are the varying thread pitches that we have throughout the line. And then essentially you're just going to use a wrench right on the three quarter inch part and drive them right off the front, kind of regardless of what you did. Cool. So I always do nice. recommend if they are that stuck that you need to pull this out, you get a little solvent out, mm -hmm. to get this thing a little bit started before you start pushing dry, but other than that's it. So these are really cool. They're really cool. So when, so when uh, you go from the nine inch to the seven inch mm -hmm. configuration, how does that change the decibels? About two to four on average, because you are losing two baffles by doing so. Oh, okay. But this is well <clears throat> below the threshold of what OSHA says is hearing safe in comparison to this being right on the line. So for example, if you do go short, this is still two inches longer and two ounces heavier than the line that OSHA says is hearing safe. So it's still well I below here. I didn't know OSHA has a hearing safe. I figured I should have imagined. It's what? impulse sound. It's 140 decibels. 140? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's that pretty constant sound. I believe it's somewhere around 80. Okay. Where if it were to be sustained. So, for example, there's a line where, like, if you had a machine gun and you were running a can like this, you would be above hearing safe because you're going to change that impulse sound into a constant sound by shooting something that is sustained, right? Right. So then I normally would recommend if you're trying to stay well below that threshold to get something a little bigger. More volume, more baffles is almost always quieter. So. Okay. Cool? Yep. So we talk back country already. There's a Banish 30 to pass around. When we talk caps, I, I'm, I, I'll this is a thousand times. You're getting kind of new too, but this is the back cap and that's the front cap, right? We address it. Breach back. and end cap is a technical term. Okay, so this is the breach cap? Breach cap. Okay. Right. Yep, yep. Okay. So when we buy things, Back if to you this, need a new so, breech cap. So, yeah, so yep. a new breech cap or different breech caps will adapt to this 1.375. Totally. Pistons and all of that. Okay, yep. so now or, I understand. Or brake inserts or flash right. inserts right. or yeah. you can go tri-lug, you can go all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Good point. Absolutely. What's the difference with the gold? I think you have a Banish 30 yep, gold. Yep, so we got a Banish 30. I'll go right to the gold and okay. then that'll make this easy. So mm -hmm. the gold is kind of our entry to what we thought could be the quietest thing ever. So this has got 13 baffles in it, which mm -hmm. in the market the standard is like seven to nine baffles. Mm -hmm. It's got a larger diameter than most suppressors. It's a 159 diameter tube instead of an inch and a half. So not only is it high baffles and high volume, but it is a QD suppressor dedicated versus just direct thread, which is a Vanish 30 is. Um, 
I would say toe to toe. They're just really hard to compare to this because of how quiet it really is. Okay. It's got the Banish 30 by at least five decibels, which is a very noticeable difference. So it's almost just four times quieter. Right? Every two to your ears, a jump, big jump. So okay. absolutely. Okay. Um, if you called me and said, I want the quietest thing ever for my 300 blackout, mm -hmm. I would say gold any day. Okay. So, and that's also hub mount? Yeah, it is QD only. QD only. It's not okay. a hub mount. It okay. does utilize currently just the taper locking brake from Banish, which is titanium oh, okay. only an ounce. Okay. Probably out here somewhere. Okay. I don't know. So brakes or flash hiders are available through us. Muzzle brake's nice and short, but it's taper locking. So essentially that taper on the bottom creates a lot of friction between the suppressor and the muzzle device itself. Keeps it from locking, keeps it really repeatable. So when it's tight, it's tight and you're not going over that line or under that line. Mm -hmm. What I really like about these two is there's no springs or anything to go bad. When they get 700 degrees and then get cooled down to 60 and then 700 and so on, springs don't last very long. Right. So not having any of that's really nice. Okay. So that's the gold. Lives in that guy. Just like so. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. So our buck thirty. This is something that we came out with as well, real recently. It's uh, in affiliate with the Buck Commander team. It's a entry level can due to materials, but not due to design. I wouldn't say it's a really really quiet can for its size. It's got a lot of baffles and so on. It's just steel instead of most of the stuff that's by Banish, which is titanium. So, for example, this is 13 ounces, and that Banish 30, which is full length there, that's also 13 ounces. So you can see in comparison what titanium can get you in volume and baffles and so on. But for 6.99, that's really hard to beat. In I, my think, opinion I think there. this right here is your best. Here's what before here's what titanium, after. Yeah, yes. titanium gets you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's night and day. Difference. Oh yeah. It's almost directly. Oh same, yeah. Same question with four six. <laughs> I'm gonna actually. I already did. Yeah, it took. Yeah, you already know took, the answer. Took, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> it took like close to 100 rounds because mm -hmm. I didn't want to run this anymore. And I was like, well, this can take five five six. I'm sure. We had a ride with that <laughs> five seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I remember seeing some footage from that too. Yep. So I was like, yep. yeah. Same story. Oh, yeah. See what happens. Just said, let's try it. Why not? We're here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> it's like this needs to get written this week. I can't no. call anybody. <laughs> so why I think the Buck Thirty is a big dog is because it's one of the only cans for seven hundred bucks that's got a hub mount. So mm -hmm. if you are that guy interested in make sure you got mounts and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. there's so this you know, comes off. Yep, yep. And then essentially you'd be able to utilize it with any of the other QD mounts or different mm -hmm. brands or so on. So your as we learned, breach. Breach and, cap. Yep. Yeah, breach cap comes off, and then you could you could switch everything. Just, just as used from that, used to basically the form email at this point. Hey, uh, I need one of these really quick. I just realized. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally I totally sure that. That is yeah. a huge <laughs> deadline. Everything cool. Buck thirty. Huge yeah. fan, man. All right. So that's the line of thirty cows, which is there's four of them now. So that's fun. There you are. Banish 223. So I probably should have hopped from it to the Speed K, but there's a little bit of difference between the design of these two when it comes to them both being 556 or 223 cans. It's the fact that I would say this is more of a traditional suppressor, and this is a vented or flow through suppressor. The difference between vented and non vented is literally that. This has vents on the end, the gas comes out the front. It's designed specifically to be on ARs that are maybe a little over pressured or don't have an adjustable gas block. Or maybe even consumers that aren't willing to do all that. So, so okay. lefties, I'm lefty. Yeah. And I love shooting that thing. Yeah. Big I time keeps gas out of your yeah. face. Right? Okay, how yeah, are they on brand of five five six? I'm shooting by the taste. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. How are they on uh, bull pups? Uh, fantastic. Anything okay. that's gonna be running blowback, DI, mm -hmm. um, something with a piston, even okay. like CMMG, they use that radial delay blowback system that works really good with okay. it. it. We found nothing but success on gas with that guy. Okay. But if you were the hunter, this is what you want. Right. Because downrange, this is going to be night and day quieter at the muzzle than this would be at the muzzle. Okay. At the ear, as a shooter, this is what you want. Because okay. this is going to be quieter for you. It's letting everything out the front. Mm -hmm. it just depends on what your goal is. Sure. Guys okay. that call me, for example, I'm working right now with Texas Wildlife on some cans. Those guys are doing deer eradication and shoot coyotes and that type of deal. They need this okay. big time because they're downrange. I ran, worried I ran a about a bunch it. of banish cans with those guys. Yeah, years ago, good. Well, hopefully you right chopped, started that off for me. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah perfect. 
So yeah, Banish 223, um, these are 850, comes in at 10 ounces. It's pretty much a short Banish 30 with a half inch breech cap and 223 baffles instead of 30. So see they're very comparable there. And then we're down to three. All right, I'm gonna pull these out so I don't get confused here. 338, that does 338 Lapua mag and it is rum rated, which is really cool. So if you got some of them big cannon 338 rums, good to go. It's very, very, very rare for a 338 to be serviceable. So that's what checks the box for a lot of people with this mm -hmm. one is the baffles come out just like they do in a Banish 30. Um, the very first baffle in this is Inconel to keep that rum rating. And then the remaining tube and baffles are all gonna be titanium. So 338 is almost always a 175 diameter. You're gonna find that throughout the market as well. This is one of the only inch and a half cans that's serviceable, yeah. that's under 20 ounces yeah, that you can no, take no, apart no, clean. No, so so Banish 33 is really nice. It recently went through price drop, which is also cool. So they're now only 1100 bucks. If you know anything about 338s, that don't cost very much. So yeah, it takes mm -hmm. a weekend to shoot that much in 338 yeah. ammo. So mm -hmm. there's that guy. And then our big dog, 46. This will do pretty much anything under the sun if it's not a 50 cal. 458, 4570. 450, 350, <clears throat> it's also magnum rated, so 416, 375, kind of anything. Pub mount, which is awesome, so any any type of mounting system you want. Modularity, like the Banish 30, so you can change the length. Baffles come out for cleaning. It's titanium with a ink and L blast baffle, so that it'll make sure that you can handle the magnums. If you're looking for one to do everything, that's pretty much it. Big time. It comes in at 20 ounces full length, it's 16 ounces when you shorten it. It's awesome can. We're going to be screwing that onto a 4570 probably a week or two. Yes. Lever guns with cans are the only way, man. It's so fun. Big time. Finish line, Banish 45. That'd be all your pistol calibers. 45, 40, 9, 380, 10 mil. It's pressure rated for subsonic turn blackout. Got blackout. It is modular, so you can change the length. It comes apart to clean. It comes with a Nielsen device already in it, so you don't have to purchase that separately if you're trying to run it on slide action browning style pistols. Um, it's one of like four 10 mil rated multi cal pistol cannons. So if you got a 10, this is one of your four, which makes it really nice. So titanium and aluminum in this can, so keeping it super lightweight, very much so. Pistol can, all your handguns. Okay, and not hub. Not hub no. because of pistons. So right. most okay. handguns are going to utilize what's called a piston, a hub, or a booster system, which is essentially making sure that it is slowing the dwell time down to actually make sure it picks the next round up, cycles properly, mm -hmm. and so on. So if you were to go fixed on most of your pistols, it would normally just fill a pipe and pick one up. Mm -hmm. can't carry the weight of the back, so basically the can kind of floats for a second. Right, right, mm -hmm. yep. You can almost, almost. there's some really cool slow-mos of seeing all of that happen mm -hmm. big time. But I actually... <clears throat> see we're good. You can see all of this happen as you're shooting, which is kind of a mm -hmm. cool I check my cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Very cool. That's all cans.